Pretty cool, right? What if I told you we could create this awesome landing page animation using just a few lines of CSS? With the help of SVGs and animated WebP masks, I'll show you exactly how to recreate this effect. So let's dive in. All right, I've already set up the basic structure for our landing page. In the HTML, I've added a div with the class container, and inside that, a div with the class content. As for the CSS, I've included some basic resets for margins and padding, updated the body colors, and made sure everything is centered within the container class. I've also added the background image we'll be using, which is stored in the assets folder. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Let's start by creating the SVG for our text. You can use tools like Photoshop, Adobe XD, or Figma to create an SVG, and for this tutorial, I'll be using Figma. Head over to figma.com and create a new design file. Then, use the text tool to add some text to the artboard and type the word you want to convert to SVG. Next, choose a font family. I'll go with Mountains of Christmas and set the font size to 90. Now let's export the text. Click on Export, choose SVG from the drop-down menu and save the file. I've downloaded the SVG file and saved it in my Assets folder. If you open the SVG file, you'll see a bunch of code. Basically, that's the SVG markup, which defines the shapes, paths, and styles of the image. But don't worry about that for now. All you need to do is copy the entire SVG code and paste it directly into the HTML. As you can see, the text is now displayed in the browser. Next, let's add the background image. We'll start by targeting the before pseudo element of the container class. It allows us to insert content or decorative elements before the actual content of the selected element which is useful for adding background images or overlays. I'm going to keep the content empty and set the before pseudo element to have an absolute position with an inset of zero. Then I'll add the background image we selected, set the background size to cover and position it at the center. The background image is applied, but there's a problem. The text is now hidden behind it. To fix this, we'll set a Z index of negative one on the before pseudo element. This will place the background behind the text. Now let's start animating the SVG. One popular way to animate an SVG is by working with its stroke. We can animate properties like stroke dash array and stroke dash offset to create effects such as drawing the text outline. Essentially, these properties control the visible portion of the stroke, giving the illusion of the text being drawn on the screen. Here, I'm setting both stroke dash array and stroke dash offset to 500. This creates a hidden stroke, which will animate to reveal the SVG. Next, I'll define the animation properties. First, an animation called dash to animate the stroke, and then a filling animation to gradually increase the fill opacity. Next, I'll add a keyframe animation for dash. In the two section of the keyframes, I'll set stroke dash offset to zero. This works by gradually decreasing the dash offset from 500, fully hidden, to zero, effectively revealing the stroke and creating a drawing effect for the SVG. Next, I'll add keyframes for the filling animation. At the start, 0%, I'll keep the fill opacity at zero, which makes the fill completely transparent. Then, at 70%, it will still be transparent. Finally, by 100%, the fill opacity will be set to 1, making the fill fully visible. This creates a smooth transition where the fill gradually appears after the stroke animation completes. Alright, now let's create an animated WebP for the background image reveal. Head over to Vectezy.com, filter the results by video, and search for black ink transitions. 
you'll find lots of resources to choose from. Pick whichever one you find interesting. I'll be using this video for the project. If you'd like to use the same one, I'll leave a link to it in the description below. Now go ahead and click on free download and save the video to your project folder. Next, head over to easygif.com and navigate to the MP4 to GIF converter section. We need to convert the video to a GIF first before creating the animated WebP, and I'll explain why in just a moment. Now go ahead and upload your video here. Once it's uploaded, set the frame rate to the maximum and click Convert to GIF. Setting the frame rate to the maximum ensures the animation runs smoothly by preserving all the frames from the original video. Now click on More Tools and select Remove Background. Here, select the Custom option to replace the background color with transparency. Choose the color you want to make transparent. In this case, I'm selecting white. Set the fuzz value to 50, which controls how closely the tool matches the color. Then click Submit to apply the changes. Now we have a transparent GIF, but it loops indefinitely. Let's fix that. Go back to More Tools and select the Change Loop Count option. Here, set the loop count to 1 and click on Change Loop Count. Remember earlier when I mentioned converting the video to a GIF first? then to an animated WebP? This is why. If you convert directly from a video to an animated WebP, there's no option to change the loop count. Converting to a GIF first gives us more control. Next, I'm going to select Optimize to reduce the size of the GIF. Set the compression level to 150, then click on Optimize GIF. Optimizing your files is important, especially for a landing page because it helps reduce loading times. Smaller file sizes mean faster load times, which improves user experience and SEO. Finally, click on Convert, and then select Convert to WebP. Keep the compression settings as they are and click on Convert to WebP. WebP files are more efficient and smaller in size compared to GIFs or PNGs, which means faster load times and less bandwidth usage. This helps further optimize the file for your landing page, ensuring it loads quickly without compromising quality. Now click on Save and save the file to your project's assets folder. Perfect, we're almost done. Now let's create the background reveal animation using this WebP. Now head over to the styles.css file. To create the reveal animation, we'll be using the mask image CSS property. The mask image allows us to apply an image as a mask, controlling which parts of the element are visible and which are hidden. I'm also setting mask size to cover to ensure the image covers the entire element and mask position to center so it's properly aligned. Awesome! Now let's add a zoom out animation to the image as it's revealed, giving it a more dynamic effect. I'm going to add a zoom out animation to the container class and set its default scale to 1.5. Next, let's add keyframes for the zoom out animation. We'll set the scale to 1.5 at 0%, and then at 100%, we'll bring it back to 1. Finally, let's add overflow hidden to the body to prevent scroll bars from appearing when the zoom effect is applied. Awesome, this looks great. This is a simple animation that you can apply to any of your websites to make them more dynamic and eye-catching. If you found the tutorial helpful, drop a like and subscribe for more tutorials like this. I'll see you in the next one.